We're going to bark graft this tree. And uh, bleeding walnut trees is the biggest problem to successful grafting. This is an example of bleeding from a pruning cut. Bleeding is caused by the walnut tree's natural reaction to wounding, but is more pronounced in the spring when there is a natural upward movement of sap. The bleeding will cause the graft to fail. The grafts will not grow if the tree is bleeding at the grafting site. If they're bleeding up at the graft union, they're not going to grow. And uh, so we cut the tree down preferably about a week or 10 days before you're going to graft. And we gash it. You see, we, we put a couple of gashes here and you'll notice they're in there about a half inch at least into the sap wood. Um, and we made a couple of those gashes uh, a week ago. And so now today, we want to make a couple of fresh gashes because they, uh, the old ones may have tend to heal up a little bit and we, we cannot have any grafting or any bleeding on top. After gashing the bottom, we cut the top of the tree off with a fresh cut so that our graft will be placed into fresh wood that is not dried out. I will cut about six inches below the pre-cut, making sure to be careful not to tear the bark at the top. Now, we could cut it here, but the lower you go, the more apt you are to have a bleeding problem. And of course, in this area, we have a lot of deer, and so we'd like to go a little higher maybe to avoid the deer. Um, also, we, as I said, we do like to, uh, we do uh, want some uh, foliage leaf surface to help feed the tree, but we don't want to <clears throat> leave any of this stuff very close to the graft site because it, uh, will cause competition, direct competition to that. So we, uh, we want our, our nurse limbs way down. Um, on many occasions, or some occasions, the only nurse limb that I have on the tree is right here, and uh, I'll take it off because I just don't want it up near the graft union, graft site. Uh, another thing that we do oftentimes if the bleeding is quite severe is drill a couple of holes in there. And uh, I learned that from Gene Sir, the University of California wall specialist years in, in 1950s. And uh, if, if you can't get the bleeding to stop, the, um, the drill helps there. So, so uh, this tree we'll put two scions on. <clears throat> on, a, on a larger tree, a little larger, you'd put on three. And if, if it's about four inches in diameter, you'd probably put on four. Uh, this is wood <clears throat> that we cut uh, during the dormant season and we've had it stored in a plastic bag in the refrigerator holding it at 32, 35 degrees. Uh, and uh, the smaller tree, we use smaller diameter wood. If you have a, a larger tree, you can use a little larger diameter wood. <clears throat> now I'm not too happy with this piece because I notice it only has a primary bud at each node here, it has no secondary bud. And that's um, not the best situation in the world. Uh, we like to have a primary bud and a secondary bud. I like to chew the piece of wood where the two buds have secondary buds under them. I cut two sets of buds per graft. The length of the wood can be different for each piece. You also do not want the wood too long. Cyan pieces with shorter inner nodes are better. Two buds plus two secondary buds give you four chances to have a successful graft. So we make a fresh cut because uh, that wood's been in the refrigerator for several months and uh, it might be not too good to, uh, there on the end. So here we go. So a very sharp knife is quite important. And you see, we've made that cut about, what, two and a half inches long, and it is quite flat. And we're gonna, we're going to make a little cut on the back side, uh, clear, clear through the bark, exposing the cambium layer. 
It's very important to expose the cambium layer on the back side. We have a primary bud and a secondary bud right under it there. And over on the other side, we have a primary bud and a secondary bud. So now we're going to, uh, we're going to put it in here. And so this is called bark grafting, and this just slips under the bark. Uh, no skill required whatsoever. Um, I should say that you mustn't start bark grafting until the bark will slip. The trees have to be growing a little bit, otherwise the bark won't slip. You've got to, and so, and of course, different areas of the state, the right time to graft is different. The actual width of this cut can be a little wider than the than the sign piece. It's not critical to have a close fit on the sides. Uh, there can be an eighth inch gap on either side with no problem. If you have it too tight when you drive this in, it's going to pry up the bark on either side. So, what I say, wire nails. Um, and uh, we put one up here fairly high. We hold this down as we drive the nail in so it doesn't squirt back up out of there. We want it down there nice and firmly. So one nail there, and one down near the tip there, because uh, I consider that very important, that cut on the back side. So, the one there. And so, okay, so. <laughs> So, so we did the same thing that there. We have a flat cut, two and a half inches or so, with a cut on the back side that exposes the the wood and therefore the cambium layer as well. And so we're going to put it over here. And so there we go. Okay, so the reason that I don't drive these all the way down is that most people, when they make this cut, they don't make it perfectly flat. And so you can see the, I hope you can see the gap that there is there. So if you don't put it all the way down, it'll still fit pretty snugly there. And that's why I do that. Okay, we're going to seal this now with this black stuff. And pretty important to seal down below here because sometimes the bark breaks beyond the cut and if you don't seal a little farther down, you might not get it. So now most people believe that you must come back in five days and reseal it because this stuff cracks. Well, we're not, we don't do that. We've got a little technique here that we eliminate that problem. The plastic wrap I use is from the narrow rolls used for wrapping pallets or pallet wrap. You can also use the plastic wrap from your kitchen. It is just a little more difficult cutting small two by three inch squares. This wrap has a static attraction to itself and is hard to deal with, but I find that if you drop the small squares in a bucket of water as you cut them, this stops the problem. Now I will show you how I use it.
So we're going to um, stick that on there and and this is one reason why we have that bucket of water nearby because we end up with this stuff on your fingers. So then we put another we put another layer of this sealer on top of that and you don't have to come back in five days <clears throat> and seal it. Again, this is this is gonna do it. Okay, and then we seal the top. And that's it. Now, as soon as that dries, as soon as that, which will be two or three hours, then you come and you paint the whole thing white. Signs, buds, everything must be white. And uh, that's very important in this spring weather. If it turns off hot, it could, with this black absorbing the heat, it could just cook them in a couple hours. So just as soon as it dries, they should be painted white. Must be painted white. One should be prepared to take care of the earwigs. If you have an earwig problem, they can uh, eat the buds right out of these signs when they first start to grow. So if we think we have an earwig problem, we put a, uh, a ring of, of masking tape around there and uh, we dump in a little earwig bait. And so when the earwigs come, they get taken care of. And this is not always a problem, but it can be a problem. In this area, the tree will push out sprouts here in two or three weeks and we must keep them all off because if you let them grow they'll compete with the grafts and they'll very can very well starve the grafts so it won't grow so we keep them completely off from this area here from there on down we want to keep them under control we can let them get oh two or three times as much greenery as we have here but we don't they, they can grow way out here and then starve the graft out so we have to keep them under control. These um, buds usually start to grow in, a, in a two weeks, maybe three weeks. And once they get going, you need to decide which shoot is gonna make the biggest, strongest growing shoot. And uh, oftentimes there'll be a bunch of shoots come out. We don't want a whole bunch going up um, because uh, we want a, a single leader at this point. So you pinch the tip, tip out of these other ones, and if, say, this one has the best shoot, these shoots you would keep fairly short all summer. So we can, because our goal is to have this thing grow uh, three or four feet above the top of the stake uh, this summer. And so once you get them, uh, them growing good, we use this green tying tape and we, we tie around here loosely. Um, and we do that about every foot, all the way up the, the tree. Um, I grafted this tree last spring a year ago, and both scions grew, and I encouraged the one to go up and make the, the tree. And I kept this one rather short, and there was a big branch here, and I cut off. So anyway, I encouraged it to go up, and it went up above the stake, 
and I headed it back to there. And the, as I say, I tied them with the green tape all summer long. They need to be tied about every foot. And then for the, for the real strength, I like this baler twine. And one go round usually won't hold it. And uh, so, and you don't want to just go around here twice, because if you go around there twice and make one tie, if one strand breaks, you lost it all. So with this tie there, if one strand breaks, you still got the other strand. So that's uh, quite important. You don't want them uh, too tight. I mean, too tight here because um, in three or four years that could actually girdle the tree. So you've got to keep them loose so the tree can wiggle and stiffen up better that way and then you watch and cut these before they girdle.